the Sony ZV-E1. Now you're probably thinking, why do you keep talking about this? Why, why, why do you keep talking about this camera? We get it, you like your camera. And to that I would say, wrong camera. I have the ZV-E10, which is the APS-C version. The Sony ZV-E1 is a full frame ZV line camera. And if you're wondering why, let's kind of get into it. So a while ago, I put out kind of a, uh, a video about uh, the Sony ZV-E1 and the, the announcement that was going to happen. And because of that, I was very much so just filled with anticipation. And because I, I, I got really excited. It turns out I, I don't think that I, I want this camera. And you're probably wondering why. So let's kind of get into it. Full frame cameras, every the full frame cameras are basically you get your best image out of it because it's a larger sensor. And with that larger sensor, you're able to get more depth of field. You're able to get uh, more light, uh, use different types of lenses. Um, the, the possibilities are endless. It's just you get better color quality out of them because a lot of these use they use a higher color bit depth, which I mean, with the Sony ZV-E10, it's an eight bit color bit depth. You, sometimes you, you're missing out on a little bit of this, a little bit of everything. The Sony ZV-E10 is officially the younger sibling of the Sony ZV-E1. So the Sony ZV-E1, as you guys already know, because I keep kept talking about it, is a very compact, full frame censored vlogging camera. And I, I guess Sony's been kind of on a kick with the with the the vlogging cameras. And because of that, um, I, I think they're already looking into another one that's coming out uh, relatively soon. And I have no clue what it is, and I am not even going to put out any speculations. Basically, with the Sony ZV-E1, you're going to get a better picture quality. You're going to get better color because it has 422 10-bit uh, color, which is going to essentially help you with the uh, using S-Log3 and everything like that. Now, you're probably just like, okay, this is this is sounding good. Why don't you want it? And it, it's a couple different things. And mainly, I'm not going to deny the fact, it's about price. This camera is a $2,200 camera. And I was expecting a little bit less. Um, am I a little petty in wanting a little bit less and then saying, I don't want to buy this because of the price. Yes, 100%. But it kind of goes further and it, it goes a little bit further into some some other things. You're paying $2,200. You you actually kind of expect a little bit out of that, right? You, you expect a, a fair amount of quality. So one of the bad things about this is since it's the ZV line, corners were cut. Corners were cut, um, especially when it comes to the body. Uh, the body is going to be more of the plasticky feeling like you would get from the Sony ZV-E10. It's going to be smaller and you're not going to get an EVF, which you would get with most of the other full frame cameras. But because of that smaller body, you, the, the biggest issue with that is unlike the, the FX3, which essentially these have the same sensors. This has the same sensor as the A7S3 and the FX3, because th those are literally using the same sensor. Um, the only difference between the uh, A7S III and the FX3 is a lot of the more cinematic features that were put into the FX3, like the body and the active cooling. With this smaller body and the, the one of the big missing parts of that smaller body is going to be the cooling. With this larger sensor, it's it's very much so going to overheat. Um, one of the main aspects of the FX3 is that it has a fan that's actively blowing onto the sensor to cool it down so you get these longer record times. With this, that's not going to be the case. You're going to be getting, well also it kind of depends, like I can't really say that's like a big deal breaker because it kind of depends on your climate at the moment, uh, whether it's hot or where you're at or anything like that, because you can honestly go out and vlog in like nice 70 degree weather and it's going to be fine. You're going to get a good amount of uh, footage and there's not going to be any issues with it overheating. But if you get it out into maybe like a 95 degree weather and keep it out there for a little bit with a longer filming time, it's, it's going to overheat and you're going to have to wait for it to cool down to be able to continue to 
film a lot of your stuff. And I know you're thinking it's just like, well, if it's 95 degree weather, I completely understand where you're coming from. And I get that. But also, if you wanted to use this full frame sensor as, say, something like a stream camera, because, I mean, that was one of the biggest aspects of the Sony zv 10 was the ability to easily use it as a streaming camera. You do that, and the longer times that it's up, it's going to overheat more often than not, <clears throat> which is kind of like a, an issue that a lot of the older Alpha series stuff came uh, had. Like the A5100 was very, very prone to overheating. And because of that, uh, people kind of got rid of it and tried to get better cameras. I guess there's also really cool things to this, like the cinematic vlog stuff. Uh, the cinematic vlog stuff is a little weird. Uh, essentially, it, basically that really black bar on the top thing, um, it's baked in, which is kind of weird. You'd think, hey, I'm going to use an anamorphic lens and I'm going to get this extremely wide shot or I'm going to use something like the um, like a Mr. Alex Tech tool, a Mr. Alex Tech um, preset in DaVinci Resolve. I'm not trying to shill that or anything, but I'll put the link in the description for some of the magic zoom stuff. And it's kind of cool. Uh, but it's a little weird that it's kind of baked in. Like the footage is going to come out like that automatically. It's going to, the file is going to be like the 4K, like the 3840 by 2160. But the weird part is it's going to just have those there. And I, I don't like that. I think it's weird. <clears throat> so this camera doesn't just take from the A7S III and everything like that in the FX3. It also kind of takes some features from um, the A7 IV, which a lot of the A7 IV stuff had to do with a lot of the automatic or maybe like the AI stuff, uh, like the dynamic stabilization and the framing stabilization. Um, I mean, you get like the active stabilization stuff all the time with a lot of different, I mean, you get in-body stabilization, you get the active stabilization on most of the new cameras from Sony. But the dynamic stabilization kind of seems a little cool, but it's also going to have that crop. Uh, and I correct me if I am wrong. It goes from like a 10% crop. I think that's what the active stabilization was to closer to a 30% crop. And another thing that they're kind of including in this is the auto framing, which the auto framing you, you, you would, that's, it's kind of cool. It kind of defeats a purpose for a, uh, like a fluid head or something like that. And somebody like consistently having to move and follow you. Um, it does, it has the crop of course, because it has to give you that padding for whenever it's following you. Um, I mean, I mean, that's kind of cool. Not necessarily what I'm looking for whenever I'm thinking of a camera that I want to use for more cinematic things. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. So it also has like in camera time lapses, which essentially are, it's basically just going to be taking photos or little portions of videos every once in a while for a long period of time. But also how does that kind of, you know, add up to the, the overheating issue, you know? So right now, the, here's, when you think about it, it's not that bad. It's like, it's $2,200 for the Sony zv one You are, it, it could be yeah, a little bit. So a brand new A7S III is $3,499 and a Sony FX3 is $3,899. And because of that, it, it seems very appealing. But if you think about how, um, if you feel, if you think about the, the used market, um, let me see, an A7S III, an A7S III on the used market, you can pretty much get one for about 28 or 2200 uh, which if you think about it, I, yeah, it's an, it's used, but um, it kind of has a, a, a couple of the those little missing things that you would, that you might miss with the, uh, the Sony ZV-E1. And realistically, like I said, the same sensor, the E1 doesn't have a mechanical shutter, which is kind of, eh, I, I don't know particularly if that's something that you might use or you might not use. Doesn't have a viewfinder and, and I mean, neither does the Sony FX3, but the Sony FX3 is actually like a cinema camera and the cinema camera, you're going to be using a monitor with it anyways. So you don't need the viewfinder, but the A7S3 does, because if you think about it, it's kind of a hybrid shooter. So the max video resolution for all of these for the Sony ZV-E1 right now, uh, it's 4K 60, but they're coming out with a new firmware. It'll pop it up to 4K 120 
and then 1080 240 which kind of matches the max video and resolution and rate um, across the board. So they're, they're, they're all going to be the same, because if you think about it, it's the same sensor. Why wouldn't it be able to do the same frame rate? I mean, and here, here's also a thing. Um, I'm kind of looking over to the side a little bit because I have a little bit of the um, the stuff, the uh, specifications and kind of like some of the testing that uh, DP review did and like recording time for an 8 bit uh, with the limit high. 4K 60 is 30 minutes and 1080 60 is 90 minutes. And that's on the Sony ZV-E1. 4K 60 on the FX3 is 90 minutes and 1080 60 is 120 minutes on both the FX3 and the A7S3 because of the bigger bodies and the active the active cooling. Um, the only one that actually has a built-in fan, though, is going to be the FX3. Both of the the higher end cameras have the raw video output, which I don't know if that's a thing that you would use, but I think a lot of people would use it for uh, running it to like an external monitor or a system like that. Um, and, but yeah, so the one thing I am not a particularly a fan of with the ZV line, like I love my ZV E10, but the micro HDMI is terrible. I hate that connector because it's so brittle. Like, why couldn't you make it a little bit bigger and just, you know, put a full size HDMI there because it's going to help. I mean, significantly smaller. Let's let's be 100 percent honest. The weight of the ZV-E10 is, is 483 grams. The FX3 is 1015 grams. You add another 700 and or that's with the X, uh, the XLR handle and it's 715 without the XLR handle. So it's kind of a chonky boy. And the A7S3 is seven or about 700, so 699 grams, mainly because so I, I, I guess I mean, if you think about it, all of these different things, all of these different features, it, it's all preferential. Let's be 100% honest, it's all preferential. I personally think that for my next camera, because I have to be a little bit picky with my cameras because I don't get cameras for free from anybody and I have to buy my cameras. So if, if you think about it, I, I have to be kind of picky with what I'm going to get. So I, I don't think I would get like a $2,200 super small full frame camera that's missing a lot of the features of its bigger counterpart. Uh, I would most likely go with the larger counterparts, save a little bit of money at, uh, later, because at some point they're going to drop in price because something new is going to come out. And I'll probably talk about that something new anyways. One thing that I wasn't also, I forgot to add, the A7S III and the um, FX3, they have dual card slots, which kind of helps whenever you're using high resolution, high high bit rate, high bit depth footage. The Sony ZV-E1 only has one, and it's a UHS-2. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's just it's like UHS-3 or UHS-2 for the cards in the FX3 and the FX, or in the A7S3. I'm not, I don't think they're, yeah, I'm almost positive that they are not CF Express because CF Express is pretty much for the higher end cameras. If you think about it, it'd be like the like the Zcam E2 and everything like that. It's 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 really, really fast. So like because of that UHS 2 limitation, it's going to be a little harder to get like the 4K 120 footage. And I, I feel like that's a limitation that uh, I don't see why they did that. I know they did it because they're probably taking parts from their other lines and it's just like, hey, we need to get rid of this because we need to bring in more new tech. And because of that, uh, they're kind of just doing the thing. I guess when it comes down to it, I, I, I personally don't want it. Uh, if I'm going to get a c cinema camera or something that I want to use as a cinema camera, I might go for like a Super 35 and just get one of those really cool box bodies. The Zcam E2 is a really cool Super 35 camera that is essentially just a body, like kind of like you would see with the red stuff um, or pretty much anything. What do you think about the Sony ZV-E1? I know I've already asked this and it's just another repeating question, but is this something as a creative or as a creator or somebody that's willing to, is this something for, good for maybe not a beginner, but an intermediate filmmaker? that wants these extra features that a full frame camera brings? Or is it more or less just like, why would you pay that much when you can pay a little bit more 
like a it's I mean a little bit it's still like a grand more but if you think about it if you already have that two grand what's another grand to spend oh my god but anyways what do you think about the Sony ZV-E1 do you think it, it, it's worth it for the features that it's missing do you think that it is the the better camera to buy because I'm genuinely curious so like in my opinion I I'm I don't think I want it but hey convince me and on that note if you like the video do the whole like comment subscribe thing it, it's it's something that helps me it helps me push in the get pushed in the algorithm and helps me bring out more videos like this to help me talk me through not spending money and on that note i hope everybody has a good night day whatever and uh, i'll see you later Mwah!